Welcome sophomores. Today's lesson we are going to be um, doing part one of forecasting. So next week you will actually be doing your forecasting during your advisory. Um, today's goal is to complete your four-year plan, upload it onto my drive in, um, in your score account. And you might be thinking, what the heck is forecasting? I'm glad you asked. Um, forecasting is when um, basically what we're doing is we're predicting what classes you want to take next year. And it's really, really important that you, um, you know, partake in this because this helps us decide what classes we're going to offer next year um, based on student interest. So today you will review, re, uh, review your transcript. <laughs> um, so in your email, you will have four items from the counselors. You will have a copy of your transcript. You'll have a copy of the four-year plan, which you'll be filling out. Um, you'll have a link to the 2021-2022 catalog. And um, you'll also have directions on how to upload the documents to your um, MyDrive and SCORE, which is what we did last week, but just as a reminder. Um, and then also today, you'll be checking, oh, we'll be checking out your graduation requirements, um, making a GPA goal. We'll be asking you to think about your PEP plan, which we did last week. Um, you'll be becoming familiar with the Ashland High School catalog. You'll learn about um, your English selectives and electives. So um, your junior year is the first year that you'll actually have um, some options as far as your English courses go, or your course. And um, then we will complete your four-year plan. Okay, hey, hello everyone. So we're gonna look at your transcript. You should have a copy sent to you, to you through your email. Looking at your transcript, um, this example shows a fourth year student, a senior, halfway through their senior year. Yours isn't gonna look like this, but ideally it will by your fourth year. Um, as a sophomore, you should have two semesters from last year, ninth grade, semester one and semester two, and semester one from this year as well. So yours will look about halfway what this one looks like. So we'll go over some of the details of it. Okay, the main concern that you have right now with forecasting is how many credits do I have and how many do I need? If you look at the top right of your transcript and make sure it's yours on the top left, make sure it's your name, address and date of birth, correct information. But looking at the right, the top right, you should see a block or a square that has requirements for each subject listed down um, code is to the left, EN for English. First line there you can see, for example, what's required is that first column to the right of the courses. That shows you how many courses you need to get your high school diploma. The total at the bottom is 50. The next column is CMP or complete. And the one to the furthest right is DEF or deficient. So looking at English again, that first line, you need eight credits to graduate. This student as a senior has completed seven. They only need one more. So looking at your transcript, you can see how much is required. It should be the same. That should not change for anyone. The middle column is gonna look a little different than this one, okay? And the right column is gonna look a little different as well. But looking down, you can see what courses you still need to take. And that's when you kind of compare it to your catalog. You wanna look at courses that you're interested in, courses that you can take as a sophomore, okay? Some are grade specific, and then your elective choices. All right, semester and cumulative GPA. When you're looking down a little lower, your GPA is listed. There's two categories, unweighted GPA and weighted GPA. The difference being unweighted is just a raw score. For every A that you received, you got a 4.0. For every B is a 3.0. For every C is a 2.0. For every D is a 1.0. And if you received an F, that's zero. All those grades put together average out, and that's your unweighted GPA. It's the raw score from everything put together and averaged out. You might see a weighted GPA that looks a little different than your unweighted GPA. Weighted means for every AP class or course that you take, there's extra points added to your GPA. So that's the difference you might see. If you look down a little further, per grade and per semester is averaged out. Each GPA for each semester at that grade level some you might see as a little higher, others might be a little lower. Um, you wanna take a look at that. When you see a high GPA, you might wanna reflect and ask yourself, what did I do that semester 
that brought my GPA up. Were there good habits? Did I develop some skills? Um, if another semester was a little lower, you might once again reflect and ask yourself, what did I do and what happened during that semester that brought that GPA down? So you might want to kind of concentrate that and work towards getting a higher GPA, especially towards your junior year when colleges are looking at your transcript. That's a very important year. So go ahead and look at that. Ask yourself, what's my target GPA for this upcoming year? And do the work that you need to. Reflect on your skills that you develop, the ones that were successful, and follow up on that. Okay, when you look a little lower, um, there's a calculating index as far as what I just mentioned for every A, it's a 4.0. Um, you can see that towards the right, how that breaks down. If you look at the very right of that line, um, P 0, 0.0, that's somewhat incorrect and doesn't reflect the true nature of a P for pass. Um, 0, 0.0 is typically for an F, which means zero points or zero towards your GPA. That should actually be blank. There's no GPA. Um, calculation for a pass. You don't get a zero or anything. So that's that's kind of a misnomer there. Um, looking down at the Oregon Essential Skills, um, your class will take that S back during your junior year. So for now, don't worry about it, but the following year after next year, you'll take that test and you'll see if you can meet those requirements. Hopefully all will. All right, so thinking to, you know, what you're going to do after high school, I know that you might be thinking it's a little early, but it's never too early to just start thinking about what you're interested in and what you might want to do um, after high school. So everyone's path um, looks different. Um, so you might be interested in doing an apprenticeship or vocational or trade school program. You might be thinking that you want to enlist in the military, um, take a gap year, Maybe you're wanting to travel or um, just work for a year, save up money, um, or just go you know, straight into the workforce and um, not go to, to a community college or university. So lots of different pathways. And um, we encourage you to start thinking about that now. All right, so the PEP or the personal education plan, we had you take a look at, I believe it was last week in advisory. And um, this is the second page of that PEP. And um, we're, we're wanting you to look at your response to this second question, what are my current goals for life after high school? And just kind of reflect on you know, what you wrote for that and think about choosing elective classes that support you in reaching those goals. So if you're wanting to, um, be a chef or go into culinary school. Um, maybe you're thinking about taking some of our culinary classes. Um, or if you're wanting to um, do fashion design, maybe you're um, interested in taking our fiber arts class. So when you're forecasting, um, something that you really want to think about is what will my life look like next year? So fingers crossed, we'll hopefully be back to school as normal. Um, and so with COVID, um, obviously we're limited in what we can do. So next year you might be thinking, okay, I'm going to play sports or I'm planning on getting a job. Um, what are my responsibilities at home? What are my responsibilities outside of school? So these are all things that you should be, um, you know, weighing out and searching for a, a good balance or a healthy balance for um, school next year. All right, so college prep versus AP classes. What, you, what should you consider as you plan your schedule? So for AP classes, um, we'll go over the pros and cons. And um, just to point out, we recommend taking a max of three AP classes. If you're wanting to take any more, then we'll have to get approval through admin. Um, but some of the pros would be that with college prep um, and AP classes, the, they're a little bit more challenging than just our um, non-AP classes. And you can earn college credit. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. The academic rigor is, obviously they're more rigorous or more challenging. And um, another reason that you might wanna take an AP class or two is because there's something that you're interested in learning more about um, and expanding your um, knowledge and skill level. Some, um, some cons would be, less social and activity time. So these classes are more demanding and um, you'll have to do 
summer home, or a homework packet over the summer, and then also more homework during the school year as well. So these are just things that you'll um, definitely want to consider when um, signing up for AP courses. And we have an AP information, information session um, that's happening today. And um, right here we have a list of um, all of the, the meetings that are going on. So if you're interested in any of these meetings, um, we encourage you to attend, ask questions, you'll get a bunch of information and um, you should have received an email to your student um, email account letting you you know, know all this information and then listing um, the links as well. Okay, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about our Ashland High School course catalog. We're gonna spend a bit of time on this because this is gonna serve as your ultimate resource to all sorts of information as you chart your course over the next two and a half years. The Ashland Cat High School course catalog has information on your graduation requirements, on your core content classes, on your elective classes, on um, dual credit classes, all sorts of information that we want you to become familiar with as you make good choices um, for how to schedule classes over the next two years. All right, so you do have a link to the catalog. The catalog is also located on the front of our AHS website. Um, we really want you to look through this. This page is showing the second page of our table of contents. Um, we really want you to start with a table of contents because this gives you an overview of all of the important categories of information um, inside of the catalog. This is um, kind of an example of how our, this page shows an example of how our courses are listed. And our first quick question for you is just to take a look and focus on how you identify categories of classes. And if you notice they're color banded, so all of your math is kind of a lighter blue, your PE is a darker red, your social sciences are a yellow, the headings are also bolded. So this is a really convenient way of kind of moving from different categories. The classes are alphabetized. They're not listed in order of um, beginning level to most advanced level. So just remember that, for instance, in math, we start out with AP Calculus, AB and BC. Those are actually our highest math classes, but they also are the first in the alphabet. And that's why they're listed that way. Um, what we're really excited about this year in terms of one of the features of this catalog is that you can click the course title and it will take you directly to the page with a description on it. Um, so you do not need to scroll through um, the catalog to read about different courses you're interested in. When you do click a particular course, I clicked French 4 here, you're taken to that page this is a close-up shot of, of the page, and you come right to the description. Um, what's important to remember is after you've finished reading the description of the course, you can easily return to the table of contents just by going up to that little tab up in the far right corner that says return to table of contents. The other thing that's important to notice about this screen is that um, there's a prerequisite. A prerequisite is a class that you need to take before enrolling in the class listed. So we do have quite a few classes in the catalog that do have prerequisites. Um, so we wanna make sure that you're checking on those and making sure that you've taken them before you choose them on your forecasting form next week. This page is um, just showing a quick screenshot of the math and science selections that we have in the catalog. The reason that we are um, kind of bringing your attention to both of these department classes is because each one of these recommends a choice for you. Your math class is something that your current math teacher will recommend for you. This actually will have already recommended for you by the time you see this. Um, because math um, success really depends on success from the previous math class, 
your teachers want to help you make the best choices for those. Science is a bit similar, but you'll get a choice typically of two science classes to take as you move along, sometimes three sciences. It's also important to know that um, students are actually allowed to double up on science. So as a junior, if you'd like to take two sciences, uh, mention that to your current science teacher and uh, get that approved. As a junior, you are going to be able to choose an English class. Um, up until this point, you've been assigned to English 10 or English 9. This is a really different process. Uh, it's important that you choose a class that feels like it really reflects an interest you have um, or a way in which you want to grow and learn. So we have listed the classes here and we're going to show you um, a video that has each English class selective teacher providing a brief overview of what their class covers. So we want you to really pay attention to that so that you can make a good choice. If you notice, the first two classes on this page are AP English Language and Composition and AP English Literature. We will not show a video of these classes because both these teachers are um, carrying out um, information sessions today. And we would hope if you're interested in one of these classes, you're gonna attend that information se uh, session. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna go ahead and play a video. Really pay attention to what each teacher says about their class. Um, we're gonna want you to pick your first choice English selective on your form that you fill out next week, and then list an alternate just in case your first choice is full. So as you're sitting here, list two classes that you think are gonna be the best fit classes for you for your junior year. Hey students, my name is Vanessa Heckman and I teach creative writing and literature. This is a year long class where you'll write creative pieces in many different genres ranging from gothic horror through to um, spoken word poetry. That's just a couple. Um, each unit focuses on a different style of writing and we'll look at published examples and generate our own topics for writing through many different writing activities. Then we'll try out writing in that style. So this class is um, a great one for you, a good option for you if you already enjoy writing and you want to expand on your existing skills and try out learning some new techniques, some new ways of generating ideas, um, and trying out some different genres. And if you're completely new to creative writing, then this is a really good class to um, begin, right? Begin and, and get some ideas and improve your writing. Thank you. My name is Shane. I teach Literature of Oppression and Resistance as an English selective. We read literature that helps us better understand the world that we live in, the systems of oppression that structures it, and the ways that we can fight against those systems of oppression. I'm going to hand it off to some students who are going to tell you why you should join us. Hi, I'm Ash, and I suggest this class because you get an eye-opener to the realities around uh, in America. My name is Zoe Hesacker, and I recommend taking this class to open your mind to thoughts and ideas you hadn't considered before and engage in fun discussions in a safe and inclusive environment. My name is John Shower, and you should take this class because Shane allows us to discuss freely between ourselves our thoughts and ideas surrounding everything that we cover from racism to ableism to many other things. My name is Cruz McNamara, and I think you should join this class because this class reveals the constructs of our society that aren't apparent to the naked eye and to brainstorm solutions together uh, to bring our community closer together. Hi everybody, my name is Miss Case. I teach the literature through sociology class. It is an English selective for 11th and 12th graders. Uh, sociology is the study uh, basically of individuals in society. Um, so we'll take those concepts, those sociological concepts, and we'll use them as a lens to analyze the short stories and novels that we read throughout the year. So just some of the things that you will pick up in this class and learn. Uh, we'll talk about culture, uh, societal culture, and different norms. Uh, we'll talk about how society shapes individuals 
individuals and then also how those individuals shape and construct society. Um, we'll talk about challenging societal norms and what that looks like in terms of acts of deviance and why people act out and challenge those norms. Uh, we'll talk about how uh, we as individuals are shaped by the interactions that we have. And then second semester, we'll, um, we'll explore different issues of class, race, and gender. And again, we'll take all of that and uh, we'll go more deeply into it through the literature that we read. So this class also offers an RCC credit. So it is a dual credit class. Uh, the RCC credit is uh, at no cost to students. And so that's a real benefit. So if any of this sounds interesting, then this might be the class for you. And if you have questions, you can feel free to reach out to me. So I hope to see you, some of you in the fall of 2021. Hi, I'm Betsy Bishop, and I teach uh, English 1112 as a selective. This selective can be taken for either college or non-college credit. Each semester, students may choose their own books after a designated genre is given, like bio biography or nonfiction or fiction. All students will write journals, short response pieces, as well as short research essays with open choices under the subject studied. So the class will read assigned books, short stories, plays, and poetry. Our projects will include songs with poetic devices, interviews with people from another generation, and write your own short story. And all juniors and seniors, of course, must pass the state assessment in both reading and writing. It's fun. Well, if you're interested in politics and lit next year, um, my name is Mr. Bowling and I teach the course. It is primarily in the first semester kind of a philosophy and literature class. And then we move on to politics and lit. And in philosophy and lit, really, we ask the questions like, what's moral? Uh, what's ethical? How do we determine those things? How do we engage in our society in an ethical way? So we'll do a lot of reading particularly reading people like Hobbes and Locke, uh, a little bit of Montesquieu, and then we'll try to apply those ideas to um, a variety of novels and plays and short stories. You do have access to SOU credit if you're interested. However, if you decide to take the class for SOU credit, there'll be an additional assignment. I do need to warn those of you who are hesitant to speak out loud in class that this is a class that's heavily engaged in conversation and you'll be expected to participate and you'll be graded on your conversational participation. Uh, so if you're interested, it's a great class. The world is about politics. Life is about the exchange of ideas and it's about, uh, well, there's a definition of politics. Who gets what, when and how? And if you think about that, that's like government, relationships, Everything, everything is really about this engagement with one another. And that's what Politics and Lit um, examines. Hi, I'm Kimberly Healy and I will be teaching Women's Lit. Women's Lit is a fantastic class if you're looking to find your voice, to speak your truth, and to learn how to write the things that matter to you. We will be covering women's history and cultural histories of non-binary folks in the United States and in the entire world. We will cover poetry, song lyrics, a play, a novel, and you will really learn how to say what it is you want to say. I'm a firm believer in academic rigor and psychological comfort. So this is a class where we will work intensively together in class, but it's not gonna be a stressful class with a lot of homework. So you will be relaxed and you will learn a lot. Thanks. All right, so we also wanted to mention some of our newer electives. Um, this last year, we had some of these electives, um, but we also know that in typical times, students talk a lot to each other, they talk a lot to their teachers, um, they kind of hear about classes through the grapevine, and they probably haven't heard as much this year. So we really do want to encourage you, again, to go back to the catalog and really read through the descriptions of a lot of the electives that are now available for you. Um, 
sometimes, you know, students will hear about it in their last semester senior year, they'll hear about an elective they really wish they had taken. Um, so make sure, again, that you're making the best choices possible by studying up on what's available. Okay, we also have electives that are categorized under career and technical education. These electives tend to be a little bit more hands-on and related to a lot of very specific careers. So taking a class in one of these uh, categories can really help move you forward um, in learning more about a certain career path um, or actually just developing skills that will really help you in the real world. Uh, right now we're going to play a video um, that provides again an overview of some of these classes. the best part of the school day. Learn and apply new skills in project-based classrooms. Become passionate about something in that school. Career technical education is probably the most valuable thing we can impart on the high school level. It's a creative outlet for energy that you have, and it's where you can learn really useful skills that you use your whole life as a hobby or even a career. We also list early college credit classes in the catalog. These are located on page 14. And early college credit means dual credit. That means two credits, one for high school graduation and one for college. So we really encourage you to take a look at this page and consider taking a class or two that's listed here so that you can begin um, collecting those college credits that will move toward your degree. Remember, these are typically free if you um, sign up through RCC or at a very reduced rate if you sign up through SOU. So it's a really economical way of beginning your college career. Okay, for students, questions that you may still have. One, can juniors take more than one now? No. Nine, no, yet. This is uh, basically no in different languages. Juniors are expected to at least take seven classes out of an eight period day. Number two, how many classes should juniors forecast for? Seven classes, once again, per semester. So you're expected to take seven with the exception of maybe one out. Three, do AP classes earn more credit? No, they, but they do earn you a higher grade point average, meaning that if you do take a, an AP class, there's extra points given to your GPA, which can boost it a little higher. 
are there other classes I can take at Ashton High School that will earn college credit? Yes, typically called dual credit or early credit. So you can take a course that counts towards your high school credit and also counts towards a college credit, hence the dual terminology. Five, can I take something like, for example, cinema more than once or twice? Yes, if you read the course catalog, you can look at the course description, basically typically at the bottom, it will say this course is repeatable. That means you can take it more than once for credit. Does driver's ed count for elective credit? As many of you will be driving or getting your permit this year? Yes. Once you complete the class, you'll get a certificate. You can take it to the main office and you'll earn credit for that class or course completion. Can I sign up for a TA or as a TA? Basically a teacher's assistant. No, you must wait until the first week of classes after they begin. How that works is you'll get a form from the counseling office. You can take it to the teacher that you desire to be an assistant for. If they approve it, they'll sign it, bring it back to your counselor, and we can place that into your schedule. And what if my parents have questions? Well, next week, Tuesday, March 16th, there'll be a 10th grade family information night between 5.30 and 6.30 on Zoom. We'll send that link out and we can have a presentation and a Q&A afterwards. Now, filling out your four-year plan. You need to complete the entire form or just complete grade 11 if you want to. You can upload it to my drive on your score account like you did last week, then email a copy to your counselor, this is important, and CC your parent and guardian. You want them to be in the loop, to know what you're doing, what you plan on doing, so they can discuss with this with you if they need to. Be prepared to make your final course selections next week, by next week, Wednesday. So look over the course catalog, familiarize yourself with different uh, course selections or offerings, and make a decision wisely. Okay, advisory teachers, we're going to ask you to go ahead and leave this screen up as a direction for what we expect students to accomplish today. Sophomores, again, we cannot encourage you enough to reach out to your classmates, your friends, your parents, guardians, teachers for advice on how you select some of your courses next year. As a junior, you do have a little bit more um, flexibility with your schedule. So choose well, and we really look forward to hearing from you if you have any questions. Also, additionally, students, this is a, a fillable form. You don't have to print it out. You can go ahead and fill it out on your device. But if you do want to print it out and fill it out by hand as a scratch, go ahead and do that. You can scan, scan it and email it to us as well. Great. And remember, we're expecting a copy. Thank you.